All right, is David Drake there? David. Yes, I'm here, Marty. Perfect. So uh, I want to introduce David. Uh, David's actually somebody I've known for about 20 years, and I've seen his uh, uh, fantastic climb as a business person, incredibly entrepreneurial, uh, very uh, investment savvy, has a global network of family offices that he works with. Um, besides the fact that you speak lots of languages and throw great parties. Um, so, um, David, you know, can you give a, some background? I mean, again, I've known you for 20 years. I can't give you enough uh, appreciation. So tell us about where you, where you are, what you've done, and where you're going. So thank you for that, Marty. Thanks for putting this together. Um, you know, it's been impressive to see what you created over the last 20 years. It's brilliant. And the economic outlook from the previous panel is very helpful, and I appreciate that from everybody. So first of all, I'm born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden. This is a picture of Stockholm Archipelago that my sister took a couple of weeks ago. I figured I'd put that in the background. Now you might have seen a different background earlier. That was from the restaurant with the family I went to. But as you know, Imardi mentioned, you know, I have invested and been involved with over 500 startups. And one of the holding companies called the Soul Loft, the media company, um, have changed the focus of our investments to later stage investments, B and C uh, investments, and more of private equity, capital markets, real estate. I own real estate in Midtown Manhattan. I'm buying more real estate in Midtown Manhattan during COVID. I think this could be a good year for buying real estate. And obviously, we're also buying real estate in um, Sunbelt, Class B, C value add strategies. But as far as it comes to alternatives that everybody spoke about, I've been very big in crypto for many years. And that goes back to the Jobs Act. So in 2010-11, you know, one of my holding companies was producing um, conferences about the Jobs Act the year before it even existed. So I ended up lobbying the Hill and Congress as well, having set up the first meeting in history with SEC and FINRA about some of the exemptions under the seven underlying laws of the Jobs Act in April 2012. And those allowed us to do advertising and marketing online. Uh, fast forward, uh, obviously we are a big into crypto. I have uh, changed those strategies as well. I'm an LP in hedge funds and I like to do you know, long to medium term investments in liquid companies, not as much equity or getting involved in the early stage companies getting into blockchain or crypto. And uh, you know we've had great success. I mean, just look at Bitcoin went up to 41,500 last week and then crashed down to 31,500 yesterday. And it's not for the lighthearted, but we've seen that in 24 hours, you know, more than several dozen times the last four years. But if people got in, you know, at that rate for Bitcoin, they're obviously going to have, you know, tremendous uh, fear getting into the space. So as to some of the speakers earlier, yes, it's going to be very volatile this year. I'm, uh, you know, it'll be very volatile and I've been waiting for Bitcoin to kind of level off so we can start seeing the altcoins taking off. And, you know, I want to make sure, you know, I talk about the outlook this year. Obviously, with the new administration, we had discussed it last year in the investment committee and my partners and other businesses that, you know, should the new administration come in with Biden, I think he's going to be pushing heavily for green deals. And we have consequently identified a couple green infrastructure project and credit uh, a product, project that we want to invest in. But his, historically, you know, when it comes to our investment strategy, uh, I have focused more and more on non-correlated businesses and investments, credit funds, but also life settlements. Uh, we've done the due diligence of a couple of life settlements originators. We're aiming for 20% IRR on those investments that I'm making. And, um, to me, that's truly uncorrelated and a good hedge against, against other investments that we're making. As far as other things we're looking to do is, I've always focused on working with international family offices. As a family office, uh, having created my money in the US, in New York specifically from real estate and tech, uh, I've always wanted to work with foreign family offices and institutions the last 20 years. And we continue to do so and we're taking some of the investments we've made from Eastern Europe, the Ukraine, construction in Black Earth to the Hong Kong board and getting them listed there, as well as taking other investments around the world that we wanna get listed in the US. Uh, some of our colleagues have been running M&A for Goldman Sachs and Packers Trust uh, uh, for the last 30 years. So we have a really strong team to help you know, companies get financed and go on NASDAQ in New York. 
Um, as far as those microcrafts we'd like to invest in on the on the stock side, obviously we'd like to go into LP positions. But on the passion side of what I'm really passionate about has to do with media. And I'm gonna show you what my dad just did. Can I share the screen here? I think I can share the screen here. And let me know, Marty. Yeah, David, you do it. Uh -huh. Okay. My dad became a world champion in a computer game called Counter-Strike at age 78. He's the world's oldest world champion of an eSport. So enjoy this little, can you guys see this? Marty, can we hear it? Uh, right, right now, I don't see it. You need to hit the share screen button. And then oh, you okay. To, you need to toggle over to that window where it's showing so that okay. we, everybody can see it. So when you do share screen, you share screen. And then Got it. There we go. Uh, screen, okay. There you go. It says you started screen sharing. Okay, we're on YouTube. Uh, Let's see if we can see this one. Is that, <laughs> is that crooked? No, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your dad. dad. Yeah, he became a world champion two years ago. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? You became what? <laughs> is, it, is this like age specific or is this like he beat all the 19 year olds? It was age specific. Uh, you know, he got recruited. So, you know, Dad was getting, uh, you know, he's retired, living in Stockholm with my mom, and my sister decided to register them to become extras on movies and TV shows, and that's exactly what he did. He ended up, you know, getting recruited by Lenovo to play on the Cine Simpson team, and the world, the world championship for the first and only time in history was in 2019. His team won, and he was the oldest player, so we decided to take... Uh, after working with him and managing him for the last year to create a uh, streaming service around him with blockchain and crypto, by the way. So what we're doing is we're putting on Twitch, we're taking my TV shows, I have Fox and Bloomberg shows, as well as movies being made. The producer from Police Academy is doing a movie with me inspired by dad. And there's a documentary coming out on dad for an hour on Amazon Prime, January 31st. And I'm making another documentary about him on Netflix because you know he's bridging old and young which is cool his hands don't hurt anymore because he used to have arthritis uh, and he's now more nimble and he's also allowing people stuck at home to socially interact through distances by ga playing games and more so he's bonding and healing people with broken families from distances so there's a lot of impact story behind him being an inspiration so what we're doing now is he's playing twitch three hours a day and we're putting it on uh, YouTube TV. We're doing Teta, which is a decentralized blockchain platform, top 20 actually in the world, uh, that actually allows him to stream and earn and get loyalty points. And everything's in in integrated so you can do 3D special issue NFTs, which is uh, non-fungible tokens, which, which can be sold and have a certain value. And we're creating a little ecosystem around him to create something interesting called the OG League, which would be the original gangster league People over 50 that like to play eSport or games can actually come together, learn, and create leagues around the globe. So I'm taking my media assets, and I'm taking my uh, social media assets, and TV shows, and movies, and creating this ecosystem for a league to partner up with all the different companies around the world. So that's my passion project. And you know, I usually don't start businesses, but this one just made sense because I have so many uh, supporting assets around it. So that's become one of the passions of, you know, 2021 for me. But, you know, um, you, know you guys can look it up, Die Hard Birdie, any way you want, and obviously uh, reach out. But it has a, a, you know, a strong message of, you know, uh, I've been listening.